Errol Ford International Ministries. Today I want to share this important word with you because I think it's very essential that we clearly understand what's going on in this time and season. So I'm going to just read briefly from the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and I'll read from verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Eternal God, give relevant interpretation of your word. That your sons and daughters, Lord, will get clear insight as to what we are up against in this time and season. And that your name will be glorified and your kingdom will be exalted. In that other name, but our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name, amen. My brothers and sisters, we, we are living in some very strange times. And I say strange because even the very Christian-minded people is confused. It's strange because the life that you expect to live as a Christian and knowledge that you expect to have as a Christian is lacking. It's not necessarily lacking because the word of God is not being taught to you. It's lacking because the individuals who are teaching the word of God, they themselves don't know God. God is a spirit and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. And to all of those who are going to introduce anyone to God, has to introduce them in spirit and the truth to God. In other words, you must give a clear path of insight as to how you can come to know God in spirit and in truth. If I'm going to introduce you to someone, I say, well, this is so and so, and this is my friend, or whatever the case may be, Please meet this person or get to know the person. That's a physical introduction. But if I possess the spirit of Jesus Christ, his spirit alone that bears witness with my spirit, when I introduce you to the Holy Spirit, there is something about me or about the, non, the, the, the introduction to you should make you gravitate and aspire to understand who Jesus Christ is. Now, I often hear people say, hey, we'll give your life to God. Try to imagine, I go on the street and speak to a carnal man. A man don't know God, never heard the word couldn't care less but who is this God because I'm poor and broke and bastard. Give, but giving your life to God, who is God? Why am I going to give my life to someone I don't know? Well then, if you are a man of God or a woman of God, you should be in a position not only to introduce the person to God in spirit and in truth, but nourish them in a practical manner that enables them to understand God in spirit and in truth. You, speak, you see, speaking the word of God is one thing. But behind every spoken word of God has to have the Holy Spirit in those words. You see, just try to imagine that I have a motor car. It's in a showcase. It's a model car, a concert car. That car goes no way. It stays there. It's a model car. But if I'm going to introduce a person who's potentially buying my car, I take them for a test drive in a similar car. And sometimes it's the same car that the person 
is looking to buy. Well, if I'm going to introduce you to Christ, I should be able to take you on a test drive to the kingdom of God. I must be able to embrace you in the atmosphere of God that is relevant and conducive to your mental faculties that will enable you to aspire to know this person called Jesus Christ. That's the test, right? But in Bible colleges and all types of denominations all around the world, they have their own methodologies, their own concepts, their own precepts, the own interpretations of the Word of God. Except having the Holy Spirit Himself take you beyond every Bible page and give you a clear revelation of what His Word is saying to you. Now we can read this Bible all we like and all we want unless there is an involvement of you and the Holy Spirit to give you insight of what you are reading, you will never ever get it right. So this is the juncture we are at. We have a lot of false teachers. We have a lot of false preachers. I must add, self-appointed teachers and preachers, and apostles, and prophets, and doctors, and rabbis, and deacons, and treasurers, and the list goes on and on. And they treat it as although it's just a business. Look at some of these churches. You ask, they got preachers who you can't get close to. He got security. <laughs> Could you imagine that? Jesus Christ had walked this earth. He didn't have the security. But these got security. Someone walking with the, the, the folders and they look for the most expensive suit in the most expensive car, chauffeur driven, and folks opening the door, and you are escorted in like you are a prince. A prince. You see, th th this is the problem. And they teach false gospels about if you sow, you shall reap. And yes, it's principle if you sow, you're going to reap. But it depends on what you sow. Because what man sows, so shall he reap. You see, we got, to, we got to understand the Bible. If you sow, you will reap. But you tell me, when I sow my hand earnings into your ministry, what am I getting? Now, you tell me that if I don't sow, or if I don't pay my tithes and I don't pay my offerings, that I'm a thief. I'm stealing God's money. Well, if I am stealing God's money, why then don't God, when I saw my money, spend the money? Who is spending the money for God? Is it you? Are you God? Well, if it's God's money, who is the thief? Me or you? Because if I give God my money, why should you be spending God's money? How do I know that God appointed you to spend his money? How do I know that God made you a steward to spend his money? How do I know that God tell you to have two private jets how do I know that God tells you to own a yacht or multi-million dollar mansion or million dollar car? How do I know? 
You mean to tell me that God can only speak to you? Well, if I'm worshiping God just like you do, and you are teaching me, and God only communicates to you and not me, something is fundamentally wrong. But put your preacher to the test. Let all the members in your church put in a saint every Sunday for the next year in offerings. And you will see what type of a minister you have in your church. You will see what representative you have in your church. No. God loves cheerful givers. But God doesn't dictate what you should and shouldn't give. If you give, even if it's a red saint out of your pocket, with a grateful heart to God, God respect that. But some preachers tell you, hey, we, we, we don't want the, the, the kind of offerings and toys that jingle. We prefer the one that green. You, you can imagine the boldness of that. But yet, when you look outside, they're driving one of the most latest brand name cars. Living large. They're eyeballing the children of God. They're misleading the children of God. They are preying upon the minds of the children of God. They are sending them down a wrong path. And the word of God declared that anyone who shall mislead my little children is best with their tie a millstone around their neck and jump in the middle of the ocean. Could you imagine that? God tell you to commit suicide. War unto you. Your punishment is, is, is extreme. Everybody eyeballing the dollar bill. Coveting, living Hollywood style. Movie stars. They call it prosperity gospel. I understand Christ said yes. I wish you prosper as your soul prosper. But there's nothing such as prosperity gospel. When the Pharisees and the Sadducees asked Jesus Christ, should we pay a tenth of Caesar's? He said, toss the coin. Who head do you see? Caesar's head. Well then, rather, render unto Caesar's, which is of Caesar's, and render unto God, which is of God. Well then, then you have it. He ain't even much concern about the sowing. Because Christ said again, have you ever considered the birds of the air? They sow not, they reap not, neither do they gather into barns. But yet your heavenly Father feedeth they, are ye far greater than they, O ye of little faith? What about Christ saying, if he abide in you? And you abide, and he abide in me, whatsoever you ask in his name, he shall do what? Grant it unto you. Isn't it not true? He, he said, See ye first the kingdom of God, and all things that are good and righteous shall do what? Be added unto you. My brothers and sisters, I come to let you know. Today, in this year 2022, you can't buy your way into God's kingdom. God doesn't concern about your money. He doesn't concern about your wealth, your riches. He even speak against it that a rich, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Don't you get it? Don't you understand? Change your ways. Step out of the realm of misleading. Thus saith the Lord. And, and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. You are worshipping among some false leaders and they are on the fast lane to hell. They are on the fast lane to hell. 
I come to let you know today it's time to shake off the old wildly mentality and wake yourself up in the name of Jesus Christ and stand fast and hold fast unto the name of Jesus Christ for his word is absolute and unadulterated. His word shall abide forever, thus saith the Lord. This is your hour of visitation. And the false preachers and teachers out there, you will swear that angels fall from the sky. They're eloquently spoken, well groomed attire, and they put on a showcase, a show, a showcase of excellence. Excellent. You can't get close to them now. They don't even want to know you. They come get on a platform. The haba baba baba baba. Say the speaking in tongues. And those simple mind people get in. Oh, oh Lord. Oh, he, he, he's really the real deal. He's the McCoy. He's the right person. He's speaking in tongues. Liar. Stop the mumbo jumbo crap. It's a lie from hell. I come to let you know what speaking in tongues is all about. For the word of God declared that on the day of Pentecost, when they were all in one accord, they spoke in a cloven tongue. There was in one accord with Jesus Christ. But yet still the onlookers from all walks of life and all nations understood clearly what they were saying in their own native language. For the word of God is telling you that when you speak in tongue, when you are in one accord with Jesus Christ, that who the recipients are that are in your presence shall have a clear, vivid understanding of what you are speaking. It's about time to stop the nonsense, stop blaspheming, stop portraying something that you are not. This speaking in tongues, if your recipients can't acknowledge what you are saying, cut it out. It is not of God. You're lying. And people believe in it. You're filled with no Holy Spirit. It's a demon from hell speaking through you. Stop it. Time and place and season for everything. You're speaking in tongues. And all those audience in the congregation, mm -mm. appreciate it, brother. Oh, glory to God. Thank the Lord for your son. Thank you for your servant. Oh, he's speaking in tongues. Liar. You ain't speaking in tongues. It's garbage. It's garbage. You pretending to be somebody. Next point. Come Christmas to give her all the lavishing gifts. Spend a couple thousands of dollars and, and mind you, they go and solicit who they can get donations from and they give it out. And make a pair that they bought these things and give it out to the public. Like the church doing ever so much. Liar. What you have to show the public? What you're doing? Come on, is it not true that the word of God declare that when you do your arms, you do it in secret and God should do what? And God should do what? Reward you openly. But no, I give out these so the world got to see what I'm giving because they got to know my church is the right church. No. You're looking to trick the system. You're looking to see what you can clench back as an exemption from IRS. Uncle Sam, you want to prove to the government that 
You are doing all these great things and you are lying. You are preaching the word of God up your mouth and you are lying with your devious behavior. But the devil is a liar. I come to let you know today, you can't lie to God. You may fool man, you may trick man, but you can't trick Jesus Christ, son of the living God from the heavens above. He is looking down on planet earth and he can see all the moves that the enemy is making, all the influence says that he's preparing all the traps and snares that he's dealing across this land but the devil is a liar man then you call yourself preacher teacher apostle prophet doctor doctor lies Stop misleading the children of God. Stop misleading the public. You seeking public attention and you want God's one too. They both don't work. Any attention that you seek from the public should be attention of bringing children of God into the kingdom of God and making them apostles and insightful teachers and insightful apostles. This is what you were called to do as disciples of God, to go out in the street and the highways, to preach and administer the word of God in its absoluteness. You were called to heal the sick and raise the dead and drive out demons. These are the things that Christ had called you to do. And Christ made it absolutely clear. Don't ever take a sight from anyone for doing this because freely you have received and freely you shall give. And I see them. They're walking around and they're talking and they're, they're looking at the audience and get, making full eye contact. And up there they're seeing, oh yeah, I got one on you. Yeah, I you know I got your offering today. Yes, you better bless me well now. You better put some good money in that offering, eh? Um, I can see it now, yes. And they're psychologically thinking which the next prank to pull again, the next antic to come with again. They want to make sure they, they get into your brain and your mind and they want to refine this process that they're building that they know that when they got you in their clutches that you are there forever and you will fulfill every financial demand if it means that you starve yourself if it means that you neglect your bills and put money in the offering believing that you are going to be blessed the devil is a liar well, I'm telling you today in the name of Jesus Christ Christ doesn't care less about your money. All Christ's concern about is about your soul and spirit, but he's also concerned about your body. I'm not saying you can't give to the church finances. Of course. If it's a place you're going to worship, providing a roof over your head, and these kind of things, you can give. The pastor probably need a salary. That's fine. But the lavishing lifestyle is what God is concerned about. Because you are sacrificing yourself. Nothing is coming back. You're scratching every day. You're in a different today than it was 10 years ago. You still got big mortgage, you still owe car notes, you still got utility bills, you still got kids to send school, you barely make it ends meet, and someone is sucking your life blood out of you by telling you God is going to bless you. He already blessing you, but you are the thief. You are the thief in the pulpit. So you take the imagery of thief off of you and you put it on them and you say, well, if you don't give to God, you're stealing God money. No, you're not. Stop lying. Stop lying. Preach the truth. Preach the truth. They're not stealing God's money. That's God's blessings on their life. Probably blessings that descend from one generation to the next. 
It's heritage. It's, it's, it's theirs to inherit it from the parents who were bona fide Christians, spiritual leaders. That blessing filtrate right down to the third or fourth generation. That's theirs. But right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that your word will touch hearts. From the preachers to the members in the pub. That they will come to acknowledge you, God, in spirit and in truth. Will worship you in spirit and in truth. Will not lean to their own understanding by all thy ways in this 21st century, 2022. Will serve you, dear God, diligently, prudently, bear allegiance to your kingdom, be ambassadors to your kingdom. Lord, I pray to every recipient right now, God, that hear this word, will rise from the ashes and embrace the marvelous light of God, his word, his faith, and let you be their personal savior. This I declare and decree in none other name but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name. Amen.